After months of prep hikes, one really awesome paddle, and one downright amazing dive trip, it was finally time to start the biggie, the Continental Divide Trail. Those that have been following me for a while know that after years of wanting to do it in 2020, I finally quit my job and with the support of my dear girlfriend Taters, went out and hiked the entire Pacific Crest Trail. That was an amazing experience and in typical fashion, totally did not satisfy me. So no sooner had I finished, but three months later, I flew down to Key West, Florida and spent the next 10 months hiking over 5,000 miles up to the northern tip of Nova Scotia. That trail saw me tromping through blackwater swamps in Florida, massive weather on the Appalachian Trail, and being very, very fortunate in that Canada opened its borders due to COVID right before I got there. Eventually, I did run into winter and had to stop at the northern tip of Nova Scotia. Amongst other things, that trail included the roughly 2,000 mile Appalachian Trail, and so now I had done two of the three trails that make up the Triple Crown and there was no way I was gonna stop before I did all three. Hence, summer of 2022 is going to be all about the Continental Divide Trail. The CDT is a little bit different than the AT and the PCT. Unlike those trails, not only is it less marked, not as maintained, but it tends to be a trail known as a collection of alternates and choose your own adventures. The trail actually has two different terminuses at the northern end and at the southern end, both of which are considered official starts or stops. And while it is generally quoted as being 3,100 miles to get from Mexico to Canada, in actuality, most people are doing significantly less than that due to some of those alternates cutting off large swaths. Of course, on the last two trails, I was somewhat of a neurotic purist. And when I started looking into this, I was inclined to just do the official red line, only to find that historically there has been disagreement between various sources on what the quote unquote official red line is. Also, there was going to be a much tighter weather window on this trail. So I had to accept pretty early that I was just going to have to roll with whatever came and probably do some of the shorter routes. And the advice I got from others who had done it is it's less about deciding which way you want to go and more about having to roll with the punches and go whichever way is open thanks to fires and other issues. And sure enough, early in the season, those that had started out northbound ended up having to largely jump ahead as many of the forests in New Mexico were closed due to a large wildfire. I decided that my priority was going to be a continuous footpath from border to border, and looking at all the information available, it seemed like the best way to do that was going to be to go southbound. This meant starting in mid to late June, while others were going to be starting northbound in April, but historically this seemed to give the best chance of being able to walk the entire trail without having to flip or skip. We settled on June 28th as our start date, and since this was late enough to be in Tater's summer, that meant she could do the start of the trail with me instead of just joining me for the middle. As with the other two trails, starting southbound basically means that you need to be in shape right out of the gate because you're starting in mountains. So I went out and I did as many prep trips as I could, getting in about 700 miles before I even set foot on trail. And because we never seemed to do anything the simple way, with less than two weeks before we were to start the trail, we actually found ourselves in Bali, Indonesia, just finishing up an eight-day dive trip. I am so incredibly jet-lagged, I don't even know what day it is, and we are trying to sort everything. Everything we need for the CDT we have to take with us this morning. Everything we leave here we will not see until... Well, I won't see it till November or December. Jen will be back here in August time frame. Fortunately, we mostly prepared before we left because I am really not feeling awake this morning. Okay, and I think we might just be ready to do this thing one more time. Ah, uh, Southern California. How I will not miss you. Here we are sleeping out somewhere in Utah and Taters is just so excited to get going in the morning. How do you have this much energy after less than five hours of sleep? And this is why nobody wants us to stay with them.
That's this is your fault. This is only one of the bedrooms because we have fruit food triage room. And I think this is actually the record for the most food we've ever prepped at once. This gives me anxiety just looking at it. Okay, so apparently this is 22 days of food for two people. Yeah. Piece of cake, as long as you are okay eating the same things for <laughs> a very, very long time. For Christmas. I'm, I'm not sure here. this is really me, but it was a nice thought. It's cute. <laughs> and yet sometimes mean. And here we are in Canyon City getting ready to go for the airport and auspicious weather, of course. Sadly, my Jeep will now be a Colorado resident until I'm off the trail. Hopefully in November. I thought this was going to be the one with only good weather. Why did I want to go hike in this state again? Yeah, right. Didn't get enough of this last year. <laughs> I want to make sure we know that we had hiking gear. Oh, there you go. Taters is much less of a fan of the Denver airport because there are bad plugs, uh, no butterflies, no waterfalls. And she won't let me buy food, which is the only good thing about the Denver airport. <laughs> a few months ago, we had the good fortune of being contacted by some really nice folks who had been following our videos all last year on the Eastern Continental Trail. And they said they had a cabin in Glacier, they would love to host us for a night or two and get us to the trailhead. This saved us some significant hassle because it meant we didn't have to mess around with flying into Glacier, then taking a train to East Glacier, and figuring out how to get a ride up to Chief Mountain or Waterton. And when plans had to change at the last minute due to some various complications, it means we had the flexibility to physically drive around and figure out what was going on with some of the campgrounds that don't have a website and don't really respond to phone calls. And tomorrow is the big day at last. We have been staying uh, the last day or two with some super nice people here at West Glacier. We got shown around the park today and tomorrow we head for East Glacier. Well, tomorrow we head for East Glacier and then Chief and we start hiking. The CDT starts in Glacier National Park and like a lot of the national parks that have been really highly impacted, they've moved to a lottery system for the camping permits. So what that means is four months in advance, March for us, uh, we go online, put in what we want, and then they process those applications in random order. The thing that's different about Glacier is whereas most of the national parks, the permits are just done by your entry trailhead and entry date. For Glacier, because of the grizzly bears, you have to reserve the specific campsites that you're going to be staying at. So it makes the permitting process a lot more complicated because you've got people that are trying to do all different types of trips um, that each need an individual campsite reserved on a set date. So when we did that permit application in March, I had to put in all of the possible itineraries we might want, and then they assign you one of them. Incidentally, once we had boots on the ground in Glacier, we did meet several other parties who had done the exact same thing and ended up not getting a permit. Basically, at that point, they had no choice but to do really long day hikes of the sections and camp in the front camp tree campgrounds. There's two possible starts to the CDT. One is at Waterton, across just across the border in Canada, and one is at the Chief Mountain Customs um, right at the border. The Waterton route was not doable for us for two reasons. One, the border crossing isn't open, and two, the snow is higher there, and so they don't open the campsites along the Waterton route until later in summer. So the itineraries that I submitted were all starting at Chief Mountain, and taking about six days to go through Glacier, doing between 10 to 20 miles a day um, with the campsites that are available along that route. Sometime in April, we heard back that we had gotten our first choice itinerary with six campsites between Chief Mountain Customs and East Glacier. I am very much a planner, like to have everything planned out squared away in advance. That's why we even bothered to reserve the permit, whereas a lot of hikers just do the walk-in permit. Um, but about a week ago, we started suspecting that our planned itinerary was not going to work out because we heard that there was a grizzly closure for a section of the trail. It was kind of hard to get info about the grizzly closure because there wasn't anything official posted online that we could find anyway. So it was just kind of secondhand reports from hikers. Initially, it sounded like there was one dead cow 
in the area of the trail that the grizzlies were feeding on and so they were just closing the trail until the grizzly the cow had been eaten um later someone was saying that we were waiting for the cow to thaw so that they could blow it up and then um i guess it's like dispersed over the area and it's not a a, a food for the grizzly bear anymore but the story we got from the rangers today presumably the more accurate story is that there was a group of cows somewhere actually around 50 cows um, that had wandered away from their ranchers over the course of the winter died of starvation along the trail in the winter and that the grizzlies are feeding on now and as far as i know there are no plans to actually blow up the cows they're just going to wait until the grizzlies have eaten them and gone off and gone back to their normal behavior then they're going to start letting hikers through on the trail of course it's a bummer for us because this means we don't get to do the whole cdt through the glacier um, so instead, the plan that we came up with talking with the ranger today is we're going to do the first four nights of our itinerary, about 58 miles through Glacier. Then we're going to exit out to Highway 89 at St. Mary and walk down the highway for about 30 miles, either walk all the way into East Glacier or just a few miles before East Glacier, you can turn off and go back into the park for a little bit to see to Medicine Valley and hike out to East Glacier from there. Not too bad of a plan. Only downside is a 30 mile walk on pavement, especially this early on on the trip, that's really hard on your feet. Um, and it would really suck if either or both of us wrecked our feet so early on on the trip and were you know, out of commission or had to take a day or two off. So we are hoping that there's somewhere within that 30, stretch we can, 30 mile stretch, we can find a place to camp. We weren't able to find any info about any camps online um, and it's not legal to disperse camp out there so we need to find an actual campground. We are going to be driving that stretch of highway tomorrow morning on the way to the trailhead so we're hopeful that we'll be able to scout something out in person where we'll be able to stay.